Family and the church, those are the keys on this month's update with Bill Harris. But as Bill says, the family and the church are under attack. Zach is with Bill talking about how we, as the body of Christ, can fight back. Well, after a bit of hiatus and some time away, Bill Harris once again is joining us today on Faith and Friends. And Bill, thank you for being on, and we're so happy to have you back. It's good to be back, always. Well, once again, you've brought a variety of topics uh, to the teaching board, and you are going into June with several different topics. And we're going to talk about a couple of them today, starting with the church and the family mm -hmm. and the uh, power within them, and then also how they are being under attack by society today. Very much so. And these are two powerful institutions that make for the bedrock of society, both the family and the church. Strong families produce a strong society and strong church. And of course, the reverse is also true. The family under attack because we're redefining the family mm -hmm. and redefining it away from God's original intent and purpose. Anytime we move away from what God is calling for at any level of society, it's going to bring in negative consequences. Mm. It has nothing to do with hating people, being bigoted, or anything of that nature. This country was founded on those principles. We're moving away from them, and the consequences are sure to follow. Well, and you're, you pull out your own quote in front of the White House. It was the, uh, the White House Conference, on, Conference families. on Families. You spoke there, and you said, wherever this country is headed on the road to moral decline, Families will be the first to get there. And we, we can see that because, again, it's the bedrock of society. Mm -hmm. And what happened, you know, my bishop used to say, what happens in the home ultimately affects society. Mm. Look at what's happening in the home today. Look at what's happening in society. You take kids today, you can even take like that, let's take that motorcycle gang that, that, that yeah. committed all those shootings and killings last month. Uh, they were, the, the, one of the leaders was talking about how that many men join that organization because they get love and a sense of belonging in that mm. organization that they did not get at home. Right. Th there's a perfect example right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. We've got to change that. You yeah. know, it's not putting people down. It's commuting, c c communicating and conveying the truth in love. That's how we have to do it. Well, and so you dive into the family first and you start at the very beginning mm -hmm. with the first marriage, of course, Adam. First marriage with Adam, and you can see that when God put him to sleep, he pulled a rib out of him, the first operation that took yeah. place, and he used that rib to create the woman. And when, when she came through the garden, he looked, and she must have been a knockout. He says, whoa, <laughs> whoa, woman. <laughs> and right away, it, God begins to design the situation where there's a one flesh relationship between mm -hmm. them. No other relationship on the face of these, this earth is characterized as a one flesh relationship. And how he gave them... Uh, oneness in moral responsibility to multiply and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. Men with men can't do that. Women with women can't do that. It's a violation of what God is calling for. And anytime we violate his laws, it creates negative consequences. Mm. Well, and you're not talking about uh, the man may be in charge, but it does not mean there's not equality there. And you go into horizontal equality in, quote, Galatians, where Paul is talking about, for you all one in Christ Jesus. That's true. And there's neither male nor female because God recognizes us as equal partners. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is on the horizontal level. And then on the vertical level, he gives a chain of command, which, mm. is, which is necessary, just like you would have it at work. Man head of the woman, well, God head of the man, and man head of the woman, woman head of the children. Mm -hmm. And... You, you look at that to say that it, it does not mean that man is a bully or a dictator because he's the head. He is a love head. He is a benevolent king in his home. His wife is the queen mm -hmm. and his children comprise his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And he is to take care of his, his family. And this is why God said, man, you are to love your wife as I love the church and gave myself for it. Mm -hmm. Love your wife as you love your own body. What a command. Mm -hmm. No man can keep that of his own, by the way, Zach. You need to have God's love coming through you so that you can love your wife. You hmm. can't do that. You cannot fulfill that <laughs> command on your own. Right. It takes the love of So you have to be submissive for the love of God to work through you and touch your wife that way. Hmm. Well, in terms of equality, you are talking about equality, the very basis, the foundation, that both were created by God. Both were created in God's image and both were, cr were created with moral responsibility. And that is to be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and that, that bespeaks what we are saying in society today, what we're doing, exploiting sex and how that is, it has now become sexploitation and the mm -hmm. like. 
and we no longer honor the, the, uh, the act of marriage or the, 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 the role of sex in marriage, it has gone outside of that. And because man is redefining what is right and wrong, now sex outside his marriage is just fine. You know, mm -hmm. fornication is now considered to be recreational sex, you know, mm -hmm. and, and adultery is considered to be sex between consenting adults. And as long as people use the pill and the condom, there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. it. See? But that brings on negative consequences on the whole society. We have to pay for that. That's right. Well, you, you don't stop at just the man and the wife. You dive in further into the family, into the children, and specifically teenagers. Yeah. And I love what you really, you talk about the role of the father in, in, in all of that with the kids. Yeah. Because he, with that role of father, that title father, you know, if a child gets turned off to his natural father because of abuse and, and provoking that child, mm -hmm he can't like anybody or relate to anybody up there with the title father. Mm -hmm. So the father is the representative of God in that home. And this is why God says through Solomon, don't provoke the child. You correct the child, but don't provoke him. The, the real balance here, Zach, I see with two sons and three daughters mm -hmm. of my own is how do you, uh, how do you corral the will of that child, the strong will without destroying the child's spirit? But that's what a parent has to learn to do. You got to you got to corral that will. Otherwise, if you don't, there's, there's going to be trouble when they go to school. There'll be trouble when they go to the workplace. There'll be trouble with the police officer. Got to corral that will, but you can't destroy the spirit in the process.